Welcome everybody to this incredible day where we get to celebrate this beautiful bride, Katie, and this incredible groom, Will. The first thing I would like to do is welcome all of you to Keystone, Colorado, beautiful Lake Dillon. I know I speak for both Katie and Will when I say we are so glad you are here and you traveled in a time like this to celebrate these two. Now, before we get started, Katie, you look stunning. I never thought in a million years that I would get to marry the most incredible sister-in-law to this incredible man. Will, you look awesome too, brother, or should I say soon to be brother-in-law. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here today with our family and your friends as we watch both of you embark on the most beautiful chapter of your lives. Listen when I tell you, there is beauty amidst the darkness. And I know right now things haven't been the brightest. The light that will radiate though from today and from this marriage will not just bring happiness into your lives, but all of your family and friends too. We can't be more excited for the both of you. Now hear me when I say this, you are exactly where you're both supposed to be right here, right now. It is just how it was supposed to happen. Now I know Mexico would have been fun and I know we would have loved to have more of your friends here, I know everyone is here in spirit and behind this marriage 100%. It has been so cool to watch both of you handle this situation, which does selflessness and just taking it all one step at a time. I know, and Allison, and all your friends have seen y'all grow through this, and I just know that this day will be more memorable than ever. I read this quote the other day and instantly thought of your wedding and wanted to share it to you both. People are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out, but when darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is light from within. You two and all of this have truly shown your light. When I was thinking, when I was thinking about how I wanted to start this wedding and what I wanted to say, I couldn't help but remember the trips that the three of us, four of us we are, have taken together and the adventure that is guaranteed to lie ahead. From Katie and I meeting the first time at my favorite bar, the Brooklyn Air and dancing the night away, to Will and I meeting for the first time at my favorite restaurant, Toro. 
You see, clearly we love bars and restaurants. <laughs> it doesn't stop there though. From my first trip on the KDB in Mexico to a Catalina trip with a surprise that brought us here tonight. You both, you both have been the best travel partners ever. And I'm truly excited for both of you. And I can't wait to see where life takes us in our marriage journeys as well. Before we get to the good stuff, we need to officially start this marriage off properly. Seeing that Will is a diehard hockey fan and player, number 15, I thought that he might need to reference his favorite sport in marriage in the years to come. So I thought it was appropriate to start this ceremony off with a tradition in hockey called the ceremonial first puck. Can I please have the sticks and hockey puck, please? <laughs> Back up, you, you we have to have a little space. Thank you, Chris. All right, let's see. Let's give one to you. All right, let's give one to I you. you too? Oh yeah. All right. The ceremonial first puck drop is a long-standing ritual. Yeah. The ceremonial first puck is a long-standing ritual of ice hockey in which a guest of honor, moi drops a puck to mark the end of pregame festivities, or in your situation, dating. <laughs> and it's to symbolize the start of the game, AKA marriage. Now, Will, before I drop this puck, number 15, a quick piece of advice. Know that this is not the last time you'll ever fight over something, but as we should always remember, happy wife, happy life, and good luck. Whistle! Yay! Oh, <laughs> take this one. Oh, mm. I'm so honored to be up here today and be the one, whoops, went, that gets to marry this incredible couple. You see, when I was asked to be the officiant, I then had the opportunity to dive a little deeper into their relationship and learn more than what I already know. Sure, just like you, we either knew Will first and then met Katie, or in my case, we met Katie and then we met Will. Unless you, you were a part of the party that night that Katie and Will met, I'm sure their love story sounds familiar. Boy meets girl, girl meets boy, they fall in love and they live happily ever after. When preparing for what I was gonna say today, little did I know that instead of their story being too good to be true, I quickly learned that their story was too true to be good, but more like perfect. The night they met was March 17th, 2014. And if you know it, Will and Katie, guess what? They met at a bar. <laughs> it was St. Patrick's Day and I can see it now. I'm 100% positive both of them probably had a full get up on, costumes, green face paint, and those clover headbands that light up the night. All jokes aside, the night was perfect for these two to meet. They caught eyes from across the bar, and Katie mentions immediately being hammered by Will's blue eyes. Oh, I'm sorry, I read that wrong scene. They were at a bar, not hammered. Enamored by Will's sparkling blue eyes. Their conversation started in a large group, but slowly they moved through the crowd, both attracted to the other. After a little small talk, hey, nice to meet you, I'm Will. I'm Katie. Do you want to get married in 2,343 days on August 15th, 2020? Yes, I did actually count. That's 2,343 days that y'all known each other. Their conversation quickly shifted to their love of craft beer and how they both had a desire to homebrew. Half jokingly, Katie said, let's do it and expected nothing really to come of it. She gave this cute blue-eyed man at the bar her number. Now, Katie wrote that. I mean, you do have really good blue eyes. But... <laughs> now, fast forward a few days, Katie got a text from Will saying he had invested in all the materials to homebrew. I think we can all agree, Will, that's the best investment in your portfolio. <laughs> Look, you got some good beer, and now, very soon, a beautiful wife. They brewed beer, brewed love, and have been inseparable ever since. Katie told me that when Will wants something, he goes for it and he's fully invested. When I, went, when I asked Will what happened that night, it goes a little like the story from the Hangover movie. 
something about St. Patrick's Day with the boys, way too many IPAs, and then waking up with a new contact in his phone under the name Katie. <laughs> Luckily, he has some of the best guy friends here who quickly cured his hangover and told him about his soon-to-be wife he met last night. No, you know I'm kidding. When it comes to Will and his love for this woman standing across from him, he too knew there was just something so special about their connection with each other and their mutual love for beer, adventure, and the outdoors. Now, Katie did tell me six years later, looking back at their first date, her experience at Will's apartment was exciting yet also terrifying. She said his room was like a museum, her sweet man with multiple high hobbies that required copious amounts of equipment and gear. So on your wedding day, Will, she wanted, to tell, she wanted me to tell you that now that you're married, y'all need a bigger house or you need a second man cave. Garage. Garage. Honestly, the love that these two share is something people dream about. From meeting in New York City, getting closer and bonding over their share house in Vermont, to chasing snowstorms together all over, just solidified their move to Colorado to start something new and start something fresh. Now, in just a few short minutes, we'll hear their love and vows to each other. But before we do, I just wanted to share a few other small things. I asked Katie and Will to uh, send me some things that they love about each other. Because I know sometimes when you write vows, you say the best things, but I really wanted you know, what they truly think of each other without the other person there. Well, Katie shared with me that you are her internal Peter Pan. She loves your undenying loyalty to everyone, family, friends, random acquaintances, and even strangers. You never cease to amaze her with your generosity and honesty. She loves that you two share so many of the same passions, but also constantly challenge the way she perceives things. You continually educate her and expand her mind. She would like to refer to you as her own, very own Willopedia. She is ecstatic with your love for the great outdoors. Even though she will never understand your gaming addiction, she is grateful you balance it with epic adventures. From skiing to hiking to cooking and brewing, she is the greatest partner who doesn't just push her, but helps her and guides her. She loves that you're the best puppy daddy to baby bandito. She said your unconditional love for the both of them is never questioned or not felt. And she can't wait to see you with a future family. She says you have a zest for life and often views things with childlike lens. It makes her giddy inside. And she finished it by saying, cheers to being forever young. Katie. Will said that he loves the cheer you bring into all endeavors of life and that you can bright the, brighten the dullest of rooms. You always draw his eye, even in the silliest of parties with the silliest and craziest of outfits and characters. You make everything fun for him and you wear it with a big smile every day. He loves your love for food as it warms his belly and has broadened his palate. Me too. <laughs> You have helped him discover that vegetables can be the main dish. And an in this has inspired him to be more creative, just not in the kitchen. He loves your passion for healing nutrition and feels blessed to have witnessed you discover this as the vocation you wanted to contribute in this life. He too loves your love for the outdoors. You keep him motivated to get outside even if he's nursing one of those nasty hangovers. <laughs> Most importantly, he loves your, we can do it, we can make that attitude. And you're gonna need that in marriage. He said your relationship took on this optimism the day you two met while talking about the desire to brew beer for the first time. Remember, Katie, you said, let's do it. That attitude continued with you finding your ski legs after a very long hiatus to taking him on his first few hikes, every meal out in which you two ate. There were so many dishes, people would not even dare to attempt to make at home. He said, you would exclaim, we can make that. <laughs> I think what's cool is when we read about their love for each other, we, we really see two different families coming together. The Viennas, the Ulrichs, their own traditions, everything coming together to create something of their own. So I thought it was a perfect time for us to hear from the, from the, mother, the groom's mother, Eileen. She wants to say a few words. Even though it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> okay, 
This is called the East Coast meets the West Coast. <laughs> Long Island boy meets California girl. He swam the Atlantic, she swam the Pacific. He played in the snow, she frolicked in the sun. He played baseball, tennis, and hockey, she danced and sang. He played the clarinet, she used her beautiful voice. The stars and the universe aligned and brought them together. And here today in the beautiful Colorado Rocky Mountains, Katie and William are joined together for always. Aww. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Mom. And now, can I please call up okay, boo -boo. the mother of the bride, Miss Chrissy Ulrich. <laughs> so, once a long time ago, there was a little girl, and her name was Katie. And she was my daughter, and she was his daughter. And she was active and aggressive and happy and full of life and love from the moment she was born. She loved adventure, she loved fantasy, she loved theater, she loved soccer, anything, everything. She just wanted to try it and be it. But Katie had a special love for fairy tales because she believed in Prince Charming and she believed in Happily Ever After. So we had these little books, they were Disney books, and you'd open them up and the, the, the cassette player would play and read the words and when it was done with the page it would go ding and you knew to turn the page. And then you'd read another page, ding, turn the page. So Katie once was, came outside with the book and she was sitting, she went over to our friend Randy and sat on his lap, she was three years old, and she said, Randy, do you want me to tell you the story of Sleeping Beauty? And Randy said, sure. So Katie sat down and she started, once upon a time in the kingdom of whatever, there was a princess named Aurora. Ding, she turns the page. She went through the entire book, word for word, and had memorized it. That's Katie. And at the end, she looked at Randy and she said, is that not the most wonderful story you've ever heard? Prince Charming got the princess, and they lived happily ever after. So, this girl, who's always been full of adventure and fun, meets this boy, who somehow is a little bit more down to earth, and he, he belongs in the world of numbers and computers and gaming as well. And yet he loves adventure and he loves fantasy because he creates all these costumes like I've never seen. He builds furniture. He, he built all these, all these things you're sitting on. This is Will. So, for the two of you, you're creating a beautiful fantasy fairy tale where Princess gets Prince Charming, and the two of you have joined together to make the perfect match. And all of us here wish you happily ever after. It was really awesome when I was asking Katie and Will how the, what they wanted to partake, if they wanted a traditional symbol of love and unity. They of course said yes, but traditional, no. Leave it to these two to come up with such a fun idea that speaks to the both about who they are, who they are becoming, and once together cannot be separated. Oh. Whoa. Don't get it on yourself. <laughs> okay, hold this. Okay, see that? This beer glass is to remind both of you of your love. Delicate yet strong, filled with love yet room with more. It symbolizes two people coming together to share one life, one love. Fill this cup with dreams. Fill it with miracles and memories. Fill it with forgiveness, understanding, and appreciation. Drink deeply and definitely drink often. <laughs> Whenever you do, remember this. Love is real, love is patient, love is kind. Once created, it cannot be separated. You are both individually unique. You have the dark beer, because you're Peruvian, and then I think you call her your gringa, so she has the little a blonde ale there. Now, as each of you pour from your glass, remember that even though you are coming together as one, you are both individually unique bringing your own flavors, traditions, and own life recipes to this marriage. This glass and marriage, once mixed, will be one of a kind, a special Vienna brew, 
Happiness is homebrewed. Katie and Will, as we get to the exchanging of your vows, I want to remind you that these words are the anchor that holds your past and future together. Today, you are beginning a journey together that will last the rest of your lives. And like any journey, there will be amazing experiences on mountaintops and times where you will walk through valleys and have trouble finding your way. But no matter what, no matter where you go, and no matter how long the journey or is or how difficult, Having each other will make your journey worthwhile. And let me remind you that love, loyalty, and laughter are the essence of a happy and healthy marriage. No other human ties are more tender, and certainly none are more sacred than the vows that you share with each other now. So it's really cool. Katie and Will decided that they wanted to read their vows together. So Will is going to start, and then Katie's going to go after. And I love that instead of saying I, they said we. That is who they are. They're always about each other. And that is the perfect thing about a marriage. It is not about I. It is about us. It is about me. <clears throat> we vow to love and respect each other every day. We will never stop showering each other with random acts of, kind of affection. We vow to encourage each other to be the best people we can be and always keep the collective good in mind. We vow to stay committed to each other, our loved ones, our community, and the environment. We vow to forever be adventure buddies, seeking adrenaline rushes in nature as often as possible. We will remain yes people and continue to explore new hobbies and get outside of our comfort zones. We vow to never let even the most boring and tedious moments of life feel dull. We will keep our inner child's kindred spirits alive. We vow to always inspire creativity in our home and keep our we can make that attitude prevalent. We vow to never lose sight of positivity. We will remain eternal optimists and cultivate simple pleasures daily. We vow to always appreciate culture, music, art, and self-expression, and hope to raise a future family with these values. We vow to be okay with staying in dingy hotel rooms, drinking beers, and playing cards over charcuterie for the sake of adventure. We do that often. <laughs> <laughs> we vow to always prioritize our health and longevity by making conscious choices to sustain physical and mental health, and of course, by always enjoying our homebrew. We vow to encourage growth and support each other in all ventures that await. We vow to be happy in motion and in stillness together. And most of all, we vow to always put our family and family above all else. <laughs> all right, friends and family, it's your turn. Now that you have heard them recite their vows, do you promise from this day forward to encourage them, to love them, to give them your guidance, and to support them in being steadfast in the promises that they have made today? If you agree, please raise your glass and respond by saying, we do. We Now that we have all witnessed their promises to each other and we have taken a toast valve ourselves, I think it's time we call upon Mr. Bandito, who has the rings because he's the ring bearer, I mean ring dogger, and I will trade him those rings for a tasty treat. Come here. Can I see? Can I see? Can you sit down? Okay. Here, will you help me, Will? Okay. 
Will, will you take care? Okay, just hold it. Just. These rings are symbols of the words you have just spoken to. The, the ring symbols an unbroken circle of love. It has no beginning and it has no end. It's round like the sun, like the moon, like the eye, like the arms that embrace. It's a circle for love that is given, come back around. Will, as you place this ring on Katie's finger, please repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a reminder that I will love, honor, and cherish you. As a reminder that I will love, honor, and cherish you. In all times, in all places. In all times, in all places. And in all ways forever. And in all ways forever. <laughs> Katie, as you place this ring on Will's finger, please repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a reminder that I will love, honor, and cherish you. As a reminder that I will love, honor, and cherish you. In all times, in all places. In all times, in all places. And in all ways forever. And in all ways forever. <laughs> Katie, Will, you did it! <laughs> With the support of your family and friends, by the vows you have spoken to one another, and the commitment and promises you have just made, it is my pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. Will, you may kiss the bride. I love you. <laughs> Katie and Will have decided that they would like their first moment as a married couple to be the first dance right here at Lake Dillon. So without further ado, I'm excited to introduce for the first time, Mr. and Miss Will and Katie Vieta. Thank you. 
Give it up for them! You guys, we are so excited for you. You are now officially married! <laughs>